morning. People of God, welcome to worship. It's good to be with you in the house of the Lord as the Lord comes to us with all of his great gifts and blessings, and we rejoice that, as we'll hear in the epistle, we are children of God. Uh, One of them is intentional, but just a a note, we put an Easter egg in one of the hymns, you know, in light of uh, some recent events that the Stemples might have been going to see. Uh, you know, so I don't know if you, I don't want to give you too much because I want you to be digging into those words and those hymns. So uh, there's two of them. One is very subtle. One is a little more, oh, we didn't even realize that was there, but I don't want to say more. See if you can figure it out. Yeah. I want to confuse you just enough. Um, God's blessings to you in worship. Let's begin with our call to worship. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. We sing. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. The word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, bearing he carried my sins far away. Freely forever, one day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain, one day they nailed him to die on Sins, my Redeemer is He. The hand that healed nations stretched out on a tree and took the nails for me. Living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sins far away. Rising, He justified, freezing forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose, oh, where death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord, evermore. The dead could not hold him, the grave could not keep him from rising again. Living, he loved me, dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. Justified freely forever. 
One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. stand. We begin in the same name into which we were baptized, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God, before one another, that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We pray. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We hear from the scriptures. The first reading for today, the third Sunday of Easter, is from Acts chapter 3. While the lame man who was now healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. 
And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? As though by our own power or piety, we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by his name and by faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Holy Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written 
that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Any children can come on up. Spencer, it's all you today, buddy. Come on up. I asked Spencer if he wanted a Bible story or a memory verse, and what did you say? Good, you kept the same answer. A memory verse. Today, I want to tell you a memory verse. I'll show you where it is right here. You see it? See that? These words? Can you say it? Repeat after me. We are are God's children. Say, we are God's children. Can we all say it together? We are God's children. One more time. We are God's children. 1 John 3, verse 2. Oh. Good job. You know, we figure it out as we go. We are God's children. That is such a special thing. Hmm, Spencer, is daddy a child or a grown-up? I'm a grown-up? Is mommy? You're a grown-up? Oh, is mommy a grown-up or a child? Okay. Do you see a lot of grown-ups or a lot of children? Yeah? Do you see a bunch of people who are, who are children or grown-ups? Yes, yes. Oh, you're a grown-up to your baby and froggy. That's very sweet. Did you know that Daddy, even though he's a grown-up, is also a child? <gasps> That's kind of funny. Did you know that Mommy, who's a grown-up, is also a child? <gasps> Want to know why? Because God, our Father, sent us Jesus to come and find us and to make us children of God. I'm a child of God. Do you know Mama's a child of God? Do you see all those people out there? Do you know who they are? Children of God. We are God's children, 1 John 3, 2. And you're a child of God, too. You know that? That means Jesus has come and found us and made us all one big family together. That's why we're here today. We're here to worship God because we are his children. So even Daddy, who's a grown-up, is even a child, just like you are a child of God. So, did you know that every day when you wake up and every day when you go to sleep, you can say to yourself, we're God's children, Mommy and Daddy. Can you say that with me? We're God's children. Say it one more time. Memory verse. Ready? Repeat after me. We are God's children. We are God's children. 1 John 3, 2. 1 John 3, 2. We got it. All right. Will you pray with me? Hold your hands. Dear Jesus, Thank you for coming to make me a child of God. Be with us today in worship, and always we love you. In your name we pray. We all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. Go back to your seat, and we sing.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Growing up, especially when I was a little bit older and especially when I went off to college, my dad would always say the same thing when I left the house. Maybe you heard something similar. His version was, stay in school, don't do drugs. Stay in school, don't do drugs. That was his way of sending me off. He knew I wasn't dropping out of school. He knew I wasn't going to do drugs. That was in part a joke, but not completely. He was communicating something sincere. He, he really did mean something when he said that. Those weren't empty words. The words, stay in school, don't do drugs, it was his way of saying, hey, remember who you are. Remember who you are. You're walking out that door. You bear a name. You bear a family name. You stand for certain things. Remember who you are. It was that little reminder, that, hey, Jacob, you bear an identity when you go out those doors. You stand for certain things. You are a member of this family. Remember who you are. I, I thought of those words, remember who you are, as I heard this epistle from 1 John chapter 3. Remember who you are. St. John's epistle is kind of saying that to us in these words. Remember who you are. You bear a family name. He tells us what our identity is, and then a little bit about what that means for us, what, what that means for our lives. He applies it as we go back out those very same doors that we walked into this morning. Chapter 3, verse 1. Here's your identity. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, or if you look at different translations, lavished upon us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. Verse 2. Beloved, we are God's children now. This is who we are. All of you, you bear a name. You, you bear a name. The name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You're baptized. You are in Christ. This is your identity. This is you. And we're here together bearing that family name. We're here to remember the name that we bear and to hear from our Heavenly Father. We remember that the, the identity that God has bestowed on us. This, this is awesome. This is what we are here to do. But pretty soon, something's going to happen. Something should happen, by the way. We're going to get up, maybe grab a cup of coffee, probably stay for the new Bible study we're starting today, a little pitch there, and then we're going to walk back out those doors. We're going to walk back out those doors as God's people into the world. See, it's kind of like what my dad would say to remind me that I bear a name. In the same way, we go out those doors. It's as if this epistle from St. John is saying, hey, you... You right there, and me, you bear a name. The name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That identity follows you as you go out those doors. It's not just a Sunday identity, like you put on your Sunday Christian identity while you're in the pews, and then you go out the door. It's always who you are. You are a child of God in whatever the circumstance. I started thinking about this. You, You are a child of God when you are driving to work and you're stuck behind that slow car. You are a child of God when you are responding to a frustrating email. You are a child of God when you're checking out at the grocery store and someone's making small talk. You are a child of God when you're talking to other people. You're a child of God when you're on I-405 and someone's in the left lane going 15 under and there's nobody in the right lane except the person right there in your blind spot and you just want to drive i know this is oddly specific i don't know why but you're a child of god in that moment when you're on social media you're a child of god when you're deciding what to watch what to buy what to do with your time everything you are a child of god this is who you are as you go out every day to every part of your life you bear a name <laughs> That means a lot for us. Part of this is, this means you go out bearing the promises of God in your life. No small thing. You go with the promise that he has called you his own. And with the promise that he's with you, that he'll never fail you. So remember who you are, because St. John tells us, beloved, we are God's children now. 
now. But there's something else to remember. See, this means something about how we're called to live, doesn't it? Because we belong to God. Today in this epistle, St. John says a, a lot of things about sin. He calls us away from sin. When we sit in these pews and we gather here, does it matter what we do while we're in church? Nod your heads, yes. Yeah, good, good, good. Does it matter what we do when we go out those church doors? It does. See, it's not that God is looking at you saying, oh, am I going to save that person? Are they good enough that I'm going I'm to redeem them? No, no, that's not it. He has found you. He has saved you. This is free. This is a gift. This is grace. This is how salvation works. And because he found you, because he has you, because he baptized you, he now calls you to follow him, to walk in his ways, to follow Jesus in this world as those set apart by him in this world. So remember who you are. You are children of God. This is the identity that you bear. And St. John says this in these words, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. And so knowing that none of us is without sin, I'd like you to take a moment just to reflect on that. This is not one I'll call on you to answer, don't you worry. None of us is without sin. It's so clear when you read the whole letter. And so truly think for a moment, where in your life do you see sin clinging onto you? Where in your life do you see Sin that you know is not for you to do, clinging on as this temptation. Something you don't want to admit, maybe, is sin. Think about that. Here's a few. Impatience. Greed. Gluttony. Coveting. Lust. Gossip. Pride, contempt, apathy. Remember who you are. <laughs> I think of someone who, um, who said something once that has ever since stuck in my brain. I said something I shouldn't have said. And this person said, no, we don't speak like that. That's not what we do. <laughs> and they were right. So also with these sins and whatever it is that you struggle with, hear that voice in your head. Who is it? St. John saying this, I guess. We don't do that. Remember who you are. That's not what we do. We bear a name. See, so you know as well as I do that all of us have sinned and that we will sin again. And so just so, just so you, we will sin again. We will fall St. John knows this. I want you to know that, writing this letter. He bore the same sinful flesh that you have when he wrote these words, inspired by the Spirit. St. John is not saying you will never commit sin again. That's not an excuse. That's not what he's saying. He says elsewhere that if we don't say that we, we, we have sin, that we are calling God a liar. That's not a good thing to do either. So what is John talking about that we need to he hear in this? He's talking about our view of the sinful nature, our old Adam. You have a new Adam, too. You have your baptismal identity, but sin is lawlessness. And he talks about practicing sin in your life. And the grammar is very specific in this. Practicing sin is this continual, almost habitual thing. It's kind of like sinning proudly. Picture it like this. This is a, a Mueller translation for you. It's sin you keep around like a pet. It's true, though. But sin is lawlessness. And so what do you do? You remember who you are. And this means a few things, but I'm going to give you a couple. The first thing is, with these sinful natures that we have, we are, we are the baptized, we're the redeemed. And so the first thing is, we are a confessing people. 
We always are confessing people in this family. John writes that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. We call God a liar. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins. He, he is a, a forgiving God, and we are confessing people. We say, God, you are right. I am your child, and yet I have done what is wrong. I am fully in need and reliant on your mercy. And he does forgive this is exactly why Jesus went to the cross, to, so that we could hear those words, Father, forgive them. This is part of what it means to remember who you are. But I want to spend some time on a second thing. This is what St. John calls us to, what God calls us to. He, he calls us not to keep sin around like a pet. He calls us to resist sin in our lives. We're the baptized. We're temples of the Holy Spirit. He calls us to fight, to struggle against it. As your pastor, I'm about to say something. I've kind of been looking forward to saying this all week. I'm not going to lie. I hope you struggle in the best way. I hope you struggle with sin. I had a professor in college who when someone would say, hey, I'm struggling with sin, you know what he would say? Great! That's awesome! Because he knew that we, were all, we all have sin in our lives, but he was saying... Oh, struggling means fighting. That means you're not just letting it win. You, you see that you are the baptized and you're fighting, not keeping it around like a pet, like this is something you want to feed and, and be proud of, but instead you're fighting against it, saying the Holy Spirit is in me. God has made me new. I'm not going to just keep this around like a pet. God does not desire that I sin, but that I strive to walk in Christ. I hope you struggle with sin. <laughs> I still like saying that. Today, many people will tell you that you're fine just the way you are. Don't worry about changing anything in your life. God loves you too much for that to be true. He knows the danger of sin. He loves you too much to be silent. So wherever you see that sin in your life, St. John says in verse 3 that we who hope in Christ purify ourselves as he is pure. And what this is talking about here. It is purifying something like burning it up or casting out what is impure. He's saying, taking those impurities, those sins, casting them out of our lives, saying, that's not what we do. Get away from me. He's calling us not to practice sinning, but to interrupt the sin, to repent, to flee from those sins and temptations, leaving them at the foot of the cross where we know we have full remission of sins but friends in Christ, as you struggle, as you fight, remember why. Remember why you fight. Remember who you are, that big baptismal reason why you have to fight. It's because of who you are. It's because of who he's declared you to be. It's because of who he says you are who he has baptized you to be in the waters, in the word, where he, he, he washed you with baptism and said, you are mine. My name is on you. You bear a name. See, you are his people. Yes, you're sinful people. You're redeemed people, forgiven people, absolved people, people declared holy and set apart and declared to be his. This is who you are. See that you carry this baptismal identity, the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As you go out those doors, you, you carry it into every single moment. When are you a child of God as you go out those doors? Every situation, especially on the 405 behind that slow car. Every situation. You are a child of God. You carry that baptismal identity and all of the promises with it, with you. It means you have a, a sinful nature to struggle against through all those days. It also means you have a God through all those days who is always with you and who is for you. A God who fought to have you before you were even born. A God who fought against sin before you were even born. That's the cross. A God who rose in victory before you were even born. Also that at a font, you could be reborn new birth in Christ. 
so that there would be no condemnation for you who are in Christ Jesus, Romans 8, 1. So that you have a God who is faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. So that you have a God who lavishes such love upon you that you should be called children of God now, 1 John 3, 1. So that you have a God who promises to hear you when you pray in the midst of struggle, 1 John 5, 15, and a God who gives you the Holy Spirit who lives within you, who leads you in the truth. That's 1 John 2, 27. You have a God who promises to lead you to the day when you will see Christ in the flesh, Christ without sin, and you will be like him, 1 John 3, 2, that is without any sin. You will see that day all because of who you are, who you've been baptized to be. So remember who you are. I want to leave you with a suggestion. Challenge? I'm going to leave you with a challenge. Homework. Homework. I'm going to leave you with homework. All right. Here's something I want you to try to remember who you are. It's not hard. This is discussed in the catechism too, but this is an even simpler version. It's something to remember to do twice a day. Preferably when you start your day, when you end your day. Whether you're about to face a new day with who knows what before you, or, or you've had a day where you struggled with your sinful nature, and you're bringing it home to rest. Twice a day, remember who you are. Say, I bear a name. I bear the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I am baptized. In those words, twice a day, remember who you are and the promises of God. Remember who you are and who calls you to be. And remember that you have a God in every moment because that identity follows you. Amen? Amen. I'll grade your homework when you get back. In Jesus' name, amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to confess the Nicene Creed today. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We gather our offering.
we stand for prayer. Lord God, your son appeared to his disciples and said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Today, each Lord's Day, you remind us of the peace you have given us in Jesus, our risen Lord. The peace, too, that, that means that we are your children, given a name, given peace in a relationship with you, our Father. Instill this peace in each of us in the midst of our lives as we remember your good news. Lord, we ask for guidance and for the blessing of the Holy Spirit to see the path you have laid out for us as we follow Christ. Equip us and work in us that we would believe and live out what we have heard in your word today. Give us courage, strength, wisdom, and every help and a firm assurance of the salvation you have freely given in the death and the resurrection of Jesus, who is our life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, guard and guide the families of our congregation. Need husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents in their calling to raise their children in the way of Christ. Grant joy to those who are single as you make them a blessing to many. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, grant wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Grant us wisdom as we live as your people. We pray for peace in this land and all lands according to your will. And for the spread of the gospel, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for healing, strength, guidance for all your people, but especially today for Pat Nelson. We thank you for making her our sister in Christ and ask for your strength. We pray for Lou, our brother, that he remember always your loving care. And Roger and Jan, our brother and sister, for your help, strength, comfort, and guidance. And for Beth and John, for continued healing, for every strength, and that they would always know your abounding love. And for any others that we now pray for silently in our hearts. Thy will be done. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we give thanks for the healing you've brought to Eric Brode. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. Continue to grant him strength healing grant him strength and healing with your healing hand according to your will thank you lord god lord in your mercy hear our prayer gracious god you govern and direct all things hear our prayers whether spoken or silent and answer them according to your will in your wisdom and grace through jesus christ your son our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever amen People of God, we gather around this altar today to receive uh, a sacrament of our God, a gift of God, and a mystery of our God. This is the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given here. We believe that he is truly physically present here and here for the forgiveness of sins, here to bless you. We receive this as the baptized people of God and those who, who, who hear this promise and trust in it. If you are still learning about this, if this is not yet your confession, you don't yet confess with the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod on this, I am so eager. This is a gift of God. I'd love to meet with you and continue to talk to you about this great blessing that God gives for us to receive. Thank you, Lord. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his willing sacrifice on the cross took away the sins of the world and by his glorious resurrection restored everlasting life. Therefore, with the saints on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us 
and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. By his death, he has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered us into new life in him. Grant us to keep the feast in sincerity and truth, faithfully eating his body given into death and drinking his life's blood poured out for our salvation until we pass through death to the promised land of life eternal. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
We stand. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let's sing.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.